Playing on the Rockets was a really great experience. Welcome to part two of Blackamist Magazine's feature on the Rockets recreational soccer team, which was a team that lasted for 12 years. Coached by Wayne Sweller, the team became state champions for their age division in 2011. This part two focuses on the challenges youth soccer faces today and their state championship experience. The biggest change I see, I think, in local soccer is the focus, uh, maybe too much focus, on developing the uh, elite player as opposed to uh, the community, the sense of community, and kind of um, more of a uh, more of a community sense to the teams, and uh, really a focus. And it's not just the uh, uh, local club. I I think parents. I think coaches, uh, and, and I think, in a sense, the club as well is so focused on developing those. Um, I don't know what the goal is necessarily, but the, the player that goes on to the college scholarship, that we lose sight of really uh, the sport and the joy of the sport and the fun of playing with your friends um, and doing that year in and year out. And I know it, you, you know you can't do that every time, but I think that's, we've lost sight of the real fun uh, of the sport. Why is that? Where, and when did that start happening? Yeah. Well, uh, there's a push statewide, you know, to develop those elite players, and there's more development leagues, and uh, I think as soccer has become more popular, um, I think there's the sense that uh, maybe we, you know, I could be that player or whatever, but those special players are really very few, um, and they sh they deserve that chance to develop. But I think we've left um, your um, select players and rec players behind, um, and I don't think there's the support at that level that they deserve. And that's where the the game is played for fun. Yeah, I think uh, I think there's more pressure. To for success uh, at the select level versus the rec level. Uh, the expectations of coaching and the expectations and the pressure on the players is a little bit higher, I think. One of the things that we have here in this area, Camas, Washougal, Vancouver area, um, is we really have some tremendous programs uh, for the kids, develop their uh, developmental programs that teach them soccer at a young age and bring them up with some quality coaching and good development through the years. Um, but I think one of the things that made the Rockets successful and is a key to success for any program is that you've really got to value each level of soccer for what it is. Uh, recreational, select, premier, all the different levels of soccer have something to offer kids of the community. And that we need to really, as a program, be able to serve each member of the community and not just only one group. And I think the Rockets are an example of how to serve well the group, the recreational group. It's really a, it's all about a love for the game and a love for each other. And uh, that always remained the emphasis. Coach Wayne was very adamant about making that, um, uh, not losing that touch. And so he made it a family. The state of soccer. Uh, I know when I played as a, as a child, it was popular, but nowhere near uh, as popular as it is now. Uh, it seems like every kid plays soccer, uh, especially in, in this area that we live in around Camas, Washington. Why is that? Uh, it, it is growing in popularity. It's starting to become a mainstream sport where, I think when I grew up, it wasn't a mainstream sport. Uh, you have professional teams. We have the Portland Timbers now. That's a professional team, not just a, a lower level team. And uh, it's getting notoriety in the, in, the, in the main ESPN limelights. And I think kids are actually seeing that there's a future in soccer, whereas before it was something you did as a hobby uh, in between playing baseball and basketball. So I'm loving where soccer's going. I think it's going to continue to grow in popularity. It's pressure coverage. It should be team defense all over the field. 
It doesn't matter if you're a forward, a midfielder, or a defender. Pressure, cover. Pressure, cover. Right? Get in front of them. Do not let them shoot. Think about the... coaching two teams, uh, the Cheetahs, which was, I think, a U13 team that year, and then um, uh, the U17 team, the Rockets, and many of the Cheetahs and their parents came to that final game to support, and uh, that was just really cool, really cool. Um, so, you know, uh, there's a sense that we had the best team on the field, and uh, and that we should win that game, but you never know for sure uh, which team's going to show up. So I was nervous, and uh, uh, I, I thought the boys played really well. Um, there was we gave up a couple of penalty shots, or else the game wouldn't have been as close as it was. But it was um, the, the, in fact the team that beat us ended up winning this year um, the the championship. So it's a very good team, and. Uh, we hung on to the very end, like I said. It's you know, no one knew who was going to win that game until the whistle blew, and then uh, just a, a sense of relief, you know, and and seeing all the kids running on the field. Really cool. But that rush when you finally you just you take it and you win, and you realize that you're the best team. In, in your state is just it's such a great feeling to me that day was kind of crazy it had points where I was crazy excited about winning and then points where I thought that we were actually going to lose. When we went up 2-0 kind of by the first half, I was really excited. And then when Josh ended up getting two handballs inside the box, both of them within 10 minutes of each other and the other team scored off of both of them with not much time remaining, I just felt that I truthfully felt that we might actually lose that game, but I probably shouldn't have doubted us because we came back and we won at the end four. We scored another two goals. We won four to three, I think it was. And I was just overjoyed. I couldn't contain happiness after that. Well, as far as the feeling uh, immediately after the game, it was just a sense of uh, you know joy and sharing it with the boys and uh, the fans and and uh, families that were up there um, at the game. And then j I think just that feeling that we worked so hard together as a group over the years, and then to be able to celebrate it, you know, with all those people that you um, that you spent so much time with and put so much work in with. That was the coolest part, I think. And then, <clears throat> um, 
Well, they do all the ceremony and all that silly stuff where you get your scarf and the trophy and uh, you sort of go through those things. And, and uh, uh, I remember it was raining and it was cold and, uh, and you didn't really even feel any of that. <laughs> but uh, uh, just, um, just a sense of accomplishment and seeing the, uh, the boys uh, enjoy that as a group together something that they'll never forget. Well, it's the same feeling at the presentation was the, uh, just the uh, sense of sharing um, uh, and celebrating with um, the families. And the, I mean, this, this team became like one big, huge family. Um, and to, to experience all of that together was, uh, I think, uh, the best part. Um, you know, when you're involved with that, you want that to go on and on and on, but <clears throat> you realize that it can't. Um, uh, we stopped on the way home, I remember, uh, after the, the final game and went to a restaurant. And I, it, it, I wanted to stay there, too. I didn't want to leave, you know, because you don't want it to, to all end. But it, it always does. It ends, and every year is different.